Millions of workers could be in line for a reduction in their national insurance contributions as the government is hard-pressed to offer a sweetener to voters ahead of the next election. Well, meanwhile, it was announced last night that the national living wage will increase by almost 10 percent. More than two million full-time workers are set to benefit from a pay rise of more than £1,800 a year from next April. OK, so what do we think should be in that budget today? Uh, we're going to have uh, the um, opinion of uh, an economics commentator very, very shortly. But the thing was, suddenly, you know, from today is only Wednesday and on Sunday, the Chancellor saying he can't announce anything, he can't say anything. And ever since, everybody's been singing like birdies or budgies or whatever it happens to be, um, the latest thing, the living wage, um, to be increased. So lots and lots of leaks and things that um, are, are predicting what is in that budget. And we're talking about the biggest tax cuts for businesses in 50 years. Um, why are we so grateful for that when it was this government that put all those taxes up? So suddenly everybody's thinking, hallelujah, they're so good, giving us our own money back again. Um, but um, that's, that's the way it is. Anyway, uh, we will be discussing that throughout the programme today. We're very interested in your views. GB News at GB, GB Views at GB News. <laughs> Dot com, or you could tweet at GB News as to what would you would like to see coming back your way, your money in that budget. Uh, well, perhaps we have a case study now um, who we could talk to. Um, what will the autumn statement mean for you? Uh, let's speak to single mum, but also marketing consultant Rachel Gristock about what she's looking for uh, from the Chancellor today. Good morning, Rachel. Thank you for joining us. Um, is there anything in particular that you've heard over the last few days, as Eamon's saying, so much has been leaked out in dribs and drabs that has really caught your attention? Or is there anything that you're really still hoping to hear from the Chancellor a little bit later on? Um, well, I've been, uh, I've had to work part time for a few years now because I got long COVID, which has left me on local housing allowance and quite dependent on it. And um, there hasn't actually been a raise in local housing allowance uh, since 2020. And that was, uh, that raise was based on 2019 rents. Um, and I'm getting a rent increase in a few weeks. Um, so my local housing allowance is £750 a month and my new rent will be 1350 So I'd really like them to bring their uh, local housing allowance back into alignment with what, what's in the market now. And specifically, you know, what sort of measures then would you want to see more house building being announced or relaxation of rules around building? You know, is there any particular policy or just something that makes housing more affordable, I guess? Um, I think they're doing they're doing good things at the moment with the renters reform bill. Uh, so they'll be changing a lot of tenant rights next year. Um, house building would be great, but that's not going to make an immediate difference to the 38% of renters out there at the moment who are using local housing allowance to make ends meet. Just thinking, you know, you, you look at any of our lives and, you know, particularly your situation there that where you're a working uh, single parent as well. And I'm sure you're really feeling the pinch but when you go out and um, you, you go socially, you go to the cinema, you go and have a, uh, a bite to eat out, um, just the whole cost of living thing is absolutely ridiculous. Do you think they've got their heads on as what it would take to just ease that strain on ordinary working families? Well, I've, I've got to be honest, Damon, I don't really go to the cinema or go to um, go out to eat anymore because I can't actually afford it. Um, so, no, I, I don't think they really understand what every man is going on, um, you know, how things are for the usual average person at the moment. I know, um, and, and, this rent increase is going to be nice to cut back on food and energy. When you, when you say you can't afford it, just give people an insight into your life. So you don't go to, um, say, a, a, a local pub on a Sunday to have a, to have a, a roast meal or something or um, sort of things that would be deemed to be a little bit of a luxury. You just don't go there. No, um, the, the, the last time I went out for a meal was in July. Uh, to uh, to treat my daughter, um, we went to an all-you-can-eat um, sushi place 
for lunch. That was the last time I went home. Yeah. That was the summer holidays. Tell me about your daughter. How old is she? Uh, she'll be 13 in a, few, in a few weeks. Well, then, you're in for a big shock. You're in for a big problem, aren't you? Because Santa... <laughs> Santa at Christmas. Um, there may be there may be a few things on Santa's list, um, which which will prove difficult enough. Or uh, have you been budgeting for that? Um, yes, uh, I have put a lot aside, and you know my children are um, mindful that money isn't plentiful. Uh, so they they have a list of things that they want, um, and I tell them whether or not we can afford them. Rachel, just finally, just do you have a sense of optimism today that there could be something in there for you, or do you feel like you're just ready now for an election and you know time for a, another team to have a go, if you like? Right. Um, so there has been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of people emailing their MPs about it. There's a shelter campaign. Uh, I think it's called Stop Record Homelessness. Um, so I know that, that, that people have been communicating with their MPs about it. So I'm hoping that it's going to be in the statement. But of course, we haven't heard any of those whispers that you were talking about earlier about it coming out. So I guess if it's not going to be in the statement, then what I'd like to say to the other parties is can you make a campaign promise in the upcoming election? Well, that's an interesting one. Very, very good. And um, just, just as regards to Santa, just going back to him again, um, have you got a Santa's list? I mean, have you been a good girl? And um, do you think he'll be looking after you? Or does mummy miss out, uh, bearing in mind, cost of living? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I'm, I'm uh, nearly 50 now, and uh, I have everything that I need. Uh, but I have been a very good girl. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Oh, well, that's, ni that's nice to hear. We, we, may me be the first to wish you not only a happy budget day today, but a very happy Christmas to you and your family, Rachel. Thank you for talking to us this morning. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. First Merry Christmas I've had yet. So thank you very much. Uh, let's speak to our economics expert now, uh, Laurie Laird, who joins us in the studio. Do you think we're going to get some early Christmas presents from the Chancellor Christmas today? Christmas, it gives sorry, me sorry, anxiety. <laughs> it really does. I have four kids. Uh, but what will the Chancellor give us? Look, this is such a leaky government. We almost know what's going to be in this thing, don't yeah. we? And the centerpiece, the what, what I think. Jeremy Hunt would like to be the rabbit in the hat, and chancellors love rabbits in the hats, don't they? But the big thing, at least for us, will be this cut in national insurance contributions. This has been widely trailed, got a lot of leaks about this overnight. Well, if they can't pay for their health service, how do you get a cut in national insurance? It Amen. This is the big question, and we don't have, we ha we won't have a government or a prospective government being candid right now. After the, the after COVID, I think we all felt like we need more government. People want more out of the government than they did a decade ago. And the conservatives can say we want small government. It's not clear that's what people want. We want a better health service, but we don't. We're, we are at a very high level of taxation right now. There needs to. Be be an honest conversation about what we want out of government mm -hmm. and what we're willing to pay. And no politician is going to do this but right now. Let's be honest. I mean, if if this cut to national insurance is supposed to affect what 28 million of us, if it actually does create growth, which is you know the buzzword of the of the season, Absolutely. isn't it? That brings in tax revenue. That helps pay for our services. The whole idea is that a, a healthy economy growth is what actually will stop us having this broken country that we're all so frustrated it, it, with. Well, you've really hit it. Growth has been, and particularly after the, 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 the very brief Liz Truss premiership, growth is the word. And you really did a very good job there of explaining what it is, because we throw that word around, don't we? It's not entirely clear what we're talking about, but a lot of growth needs to come from businesses much as previous governments have said business doesn't matter and, and, and in language that, that uh, you can't use it in a family programming, mm -hmm. remember <laughs> Boris Johnson. But most people are employed by a business somewhere along the line. And the problem that we have is businesses right now don't have the confidence in the UK to continue to invest. Some of that's Brexit, but not all of it. The biggest thing here is changing policy. Look, with the Conservative government over the past three years, we've had so many different economic policies, even with this government. Jeremy Hunt, a couple of months ago, we can't cut taxes, we can't afford it. All of a sudden, over the week, 
weekend. Mm. It's like he was captured saying, we've turned a corner. We can cut taxes now. This lack of stability is really scaring business but off. But what can business expect today, do you think? It, one of the things that business has been looking at is this mechanism that was announced last year, which allows them, to, I'm getting a little bit dull here, but this is pretty important, allows them to cut their, write off any kind of big investment off their tax bill. Now, that was meant to expire in 2026. It looks like Jeremy Hunt's going to extend that a bit. But what happens if the new government comes what in? What sort of investment are we talking about? Is this specifically... Capital, really dull just stuff. Any kind of, it's not just tech, tech or equipment. It could be equipment. It could be software. Anything that allows that business to grow, okay. that can create <laughs> growth, yeah. maybe hire more people, hire people in jobs that suit their uh, their skill level. One of the problems we have in this economy is unemployment's pretty low. We have a lot of people on long-term unemployment, and the budget was going to try to address that. But matching job openings with skill levels is a problem, and, and, and educating people into jobs uh, that exist is something that this government or a future government has to look at. Okay, hold that thought, Laurie. You're going to be with us throughout the programme this morning, uh, looking into your crystal ball and uh, whatever the government have leaked as to what is going to happen.